This video is to demonstrate the virtual reality interference reporting feature for the Sunsight AAT alignment tool. Uh, this feature was developed after a discussion with uh, AT&T regarding the uh, inability to visually verify if there was uh, interference from adjacent antennas on a, a cell site. Uh, they couldn't do that with the uh, embedded camera systems, so they were discussing how to do that and this is SunSight's uh, a solution for that. We'll start out by bringing up a standard AAT alignment report. And as you can see, the this is the standard things you'd expect in an alignment report, azimuth, tilt, etc. Uh, but along with this report is an attachment of a customized Google Earth input file that will show the uh, different alignments in this report for this site actually for two sites in this case with uh, detail on each of those alignments and how to use them to detect possible interference okay as we zoom in here you can see that we're getting some pretty good detail on how this is done and what we're looking at is the physical uh, alignment of antennas as captured again by the Sunsight AAT you can click on any of these arrowheads to get the specific uh, alignment for that particular antenna. I'll zoom in here and you can click on this one and see that. You can move around the site to do all those things. To detect interference, here's one way that can be detected. If you look at these particular arrows, you can see that the bore side of this antenna, the orange, and the bore side of the red antenna are going to intersect not too far from uh, the origin. Uh, so this is a potential source of uh, RF interference and an RF engineer could look at this data, decide if there is a problem, perhaps a customer has reported a problem uh, that could be identified in this way. So that you can not only look at it in azimuth, you can also rotate to see the uh, tilt component component of these same alignments. Here's a good example right here. Again, to be used to determine interference. Beyond just the bore side of the antenna, you can also turn on a simulated radiation pattern. We'll pick this particular uh, antenna and its alignment and we'll put up a simu uh, simulated RF pattern of 120 degrees. You can see the fans been put out here. We'll move out and you can see the uh, based on the tilt and the azimuth what the expected uh, bore site radiation would be. If we want to zoom in here you can see some obstructions. This building is clearly obstructing. You can rotate this to see at what level that that bore site strikes the antenna and that might be a good thing or, or an expected thing again up to the RF engineer but very useful uh, in that regard. So let's, uh, let's go back sort of to the original uh, view and we'll show you something else that can be used. The, over time, there's a uh, history function that allows you to use the Google Earth imagery over time. And so happens that where we did this demonstration site, the building didn't exist just five or six years ago. So we're going to bring this forward in time. You'll be able to see that the building's actually uh, being constructed. Here's the before when they're doing the excavation. Here the building is in place and then we'll bring it up to current time. The use for that would be uh, to look at uh, perhaps uh, if you're having an obstruction problem or you believe there's an ob obstruction problem, you could pull back the time to see what's changed from the previous imagery to the current imagery. And that'll continue into the future. This same file, as more imagery is collected by Google Earth, this same file from the AAT can be put on there to look at any future changes uh, that might cause problems with the cell coverage. Okay, so we're gonna dive in here once more and just show you again how to, how you can turn on these various beam uh, simulated uh, RF patterns on the ground with different beam widths. I'll show you a 60 and there's a 90 and there's a 120 which sort of covers the basics, basic uh, layout of uh, different, different number of sectored sites. So again we think this will be a very useful feature for uh, RF engineers and quality engineers 
and gives the RF engineer a view not only of what he designed before uh, it was implemented in the field, but the results after it was implemented and uh, as it's actually operating in the field. That ends the demonstration. Thank you.